Hey, hey, party people, it's Lycona de Chichi, and welcome to this tips and techniques casual guide for Dragon Song's Reprise Ultimate, or better known as DSR. Now, there are plenty of guides already out there, and yes, I'm extremely late to the party, but rather than explaining the fight again like some of the many other people have already done, I'm going to talk about some of the tips and techniques I use to help me clear this fight. Things like positioning your character, identifying markers on the stage, standing in certain spots, or what to look out for, when to start moving, or when to not touch anything. I main dancer in this fight, so a lot of these tips will be from a ranged DPS perspective. I touch on some of the other roles, but just keep in mind that I might not fully understand some of the other mechanics that the tanks and the healers deal with. Treat this guide as more of a commentary on the fight rather than a how-to guide. To give you some perspective on how long it took us to learn and clear this fight, in total we spent about 3 to 4 hours a day, 4 to 5 days a week, and it took us about 6 weeks. The main fight lasts a bit under 19 minutes, and it took us around 1100 pulls to clear. I think the total time we spent on the fight was maybe 80 hours or so, uh, give or take. Now, don't let that scare you away. Just like any MMO, it takes time to learn the fight and all these mechanics. My hope is that this guide helps you and your group gain a new perspective on the fight so that you and your team can go out there and get your clears. And with that out of the way, let's get started. So yeah, as we come in, here's the door boss and we set up our markers like this. And as you can see, they're kind of in these, uh, in these like little diamonds right here on the stage. And you'll see that there's sort of this ring that goes around. Uh, the stage so we have our markers set up like that that's how we like to do it um, only for this first phase so um, and let's uh, let's continue let's see what we do so there's two bosses um, we put a uh, we put a circle on Sir Grinnell um, because he's the warrior he's gonna do knockbacks and he's the one that's going to do AoEs um, he'll do like a circle AoE around him a dynamo or um, or he'll do an AoE around him um, it just depends on uh, what you see. Let me see if I can figure out how to do this thing right. There we go. Um, and for this perspective, obviously, you want to use food and pots and all of that stuff just to just to make it easier on yourselves. We basically pull the bosses into the middle here as soon as it goes. And there's really not much else uh, to kind of think about um, for this very opening stuff. So yeah, we pull the bosses into the middle. Um, one thing that we do uh, have to do with the party is stand a little bit further back away from uh, the two the two ads. Uh, because there's the tether that comes out and the off tank needs to grab this tether. There it is right there. You can see like the... It's really hard to pick up right there, that little like pulsing, um, that little pulsing guy, but um, you'll, you'll, you'll recognize it, you'll see it eventually. So he picks, uh, Yve, our tank, picks it up and he takes it to the opposite side. Um, we all stay in, everybody gets hit and he gets stunned and the party gets a thing and pretty much the setup is like, you know, party at the back, everybody stacks and then um, the two tanks up there uh, do their thing. After this, we sort of spread out because once um, Sir uh, Adelpho jumps away, four of us will get um, these uh, things on us and uh, the markers. And pretty much this is just, it's completely random, so you just have to wing it. Um, but what I like to do here is, um, here I'll back it up for a sec. You can see like, how I kind of spread out and you're, you'll get, everybody will kind of spread out uh, properly, but you see me turn my camera around because I'm looking at the markers. Um, I'm looking at the markers out here to see how to position myself. Um, and the idea here, come on, play, is that I'll position myself in between, um, in between the boss and one of these markers. And uh, yeah, that just helps it out a little bit. And then the other four people who didn't get markers will get markers, and then they're on the other side. Um, and then if you don't have markers, you stack up like this. Um, but as you can see here, um, that if you were to draw a line from like the boss to these markers, 
That's sort of the uh, that's sort of the placement, and that's why we have the markers there, which is not too bad. It works. <clears throat> And at this point, um, here we go, I'll stop, I'll back it up for a second. But at this point, after after the second set of markers go off, um, you, everybody wants to move to the middle, and uh, you look at the outside of the stage, so um, at north, south, east, and west, and you can see me spin my camera around to try and find uh, this guy right here. And he can appear on north, east, uh, he, he can appear north, south, east, or west. Um, on the outside of the stage, um, he'll do a knockback uh, from from his perspective, and let's see here. Do a little trash, clear that out, <clears throat> and uh, pretty much we we all hit our anti knockbacks here. Um, it just helps out to uh, position ourselves, and this is the spot where I kind of look at. I, I position myself right here on this little. Um, you can see this little diamond here on the stage, and uh, I position myself like right here, and then depending on which way um, uh, Adelpha goes, he'll either dash this way, or he'll dash the other way, and whichever way he's dashing up here, that's the direction that the party will run to these spots right here, to this little, to this little point, or this little point right here. So you can see how all of this is going to like play out. So he dashes that way, we run to this little point right here, <clears throat> and we dodge all the craziness. Um, one of the tanks will go over this way because they have aggro, aggro and when when Adelpho comes back, he'll pop on the main tank with aggro. You know, sort of your standard composition stuff, or standard party mechanic stuff. Um, silence here, so I switch target, holiest Howling, um, I just silence him. Um, and also too, like if you silence, uh, if you silence the first one, you will you won't be able to silence his second, uh, his second uh, mechanic, uh, or second silence. Um, so you'll have to have one of the tanks uh, do that with their silence, or or whoever you have. Um, but the third silence when he does it, you'll have you'll your your silence will come back up by then. So it's sort of no big deal. We drag him off to the middle. Um, we may we have to kill him at the same time, so I'm looking at their health right now. And uh, apparently my computer is slowing down. Whoa. Okay. All right. That was a that was a crazy one. Um, <clears throat> oh, this is so this is markers and how we uh, so everybody gets a, a PlayStation markers on their head. Um, we color code it to make it super easy for all of us. So like. You know, the purple markers go to the purple thing, the reds go to the red, the the greens are the yellows, so the greens will go to the yellows, and then the X's will go to the blues. So you don't have to really uh, think, you just sort of match up the colors with it, and then, um, you know, see if you and your party, that your, your teammate, is on the opposite side. And, um, and that's why we also have the circle, that's why we also have the circle as well, because we want to base our knockback off of uh, Grinald here. Um, our fellow with the circle So you can see me I have the purple so I go to the purple marker I line myself up and Then we all get knocked back and there's a moment where you can move a little bit, but you know There you go. The next silence comes out right there. So one of the tanks will handle it And here uh, you just keep them even um, There's either a uh, there's a big AOE like that and it's either um, out or in for the AOEs. There's the, there's the third silence, which your silence will be up for. And then um, you just take them down. After you take them down, uh, we move over to this little section right here. And um, you'll see this again later in the fight. Um, and how we do it here is we have tanks first. Um, then we'll have, I think, melee DPS, range DPS and then healers but uh here's what i look for right is um uh you can see that the the two tanks are right here and what's going to happen is that there's going to be a cone that goes out this way um and then you know there's some debuff stuff that happens with it and um let's just play through and you've probably already seen this before if you've done the fight so range will move in as soon as those aoe's go off you can see those aoe's right like that and that um 
Obviously, if obviously if somebody is standing right here, you're gonna cleave the party. Um, but once once you're done with this, you run around here like that, and then you go around here like that because these cones give you a debuff, which are these little yellow guys right here, um, and they're like little AOEs that explode on your character. But you have to place them down and then move out of the way, and they'll explode. Um, and so here we'll just we'll just see how it how it goes. So I go here. That's my spot for everything. Now here's where I'm looking at. I'm looking at my partner over here, Pally, um, and I'm looking to see where where he stands because by the time this thing goes out, his little explodey thing will explode um, around him as he moves out of the way in like I don't know maybe a second or a second and a half like after you get over there. Um, so I'm looking at, you know, I get hit, that's my cue to move out of the way, right? And I don't go all the way to where he is, yet, I wait for a second, boom, that's the thing that I'm looking for. I'm looking for this AoE that appears, right? And so, as soon as that goes away, now my eyes go to my debuff bar, which is this guy right here. And here, let me back up, um, let me back up for a minute. And I'll kind of talk through how I would go. So the things go off. I'm looking for this guy over here. <clears throat> the waves hit. I'm looking for the explosion. And then I look at my debuff bar. I look at my debuff bar. Right as I see that explosion on my partner go off. Debuff bar, three, two, one. Put my thing down and then run back into the middle, um, avoiding... Uh, avoiding the the DPS or the, the AOE not the DPS I'm the DPS ha um, and and the important thing about this phase is that you have to hit Thornton if you do not hit him um, and he takes no damage you'll you'll have to do the door boss again which is a uh, completely hilarious and um, I'm sure that there's folks that have done that before um, at this point we change our positions of our markers uh, we move them in as you see right here uh, this helps out with a ton of different positionings and a ton of different stuff um, that, you know, th that just progresses through the fight. And you'll see it as we go along. So pretty much standard pull right here. Um, the first mechanic that we're going to get is pretty much the entire party stacks up in a line. Um, tank pulls the party away. And the thing that I look for uh, is this this first mechanic right here. Whoop. Pause. Come on there. Come on there, guy. Um, and the one thing that uh, I want you to remember about this mechanic is the actual timing. Um, because what I'm looking at is I'm looking at the cast bar of the mechanic. And once the cast bar disappears, that's when I'll move. Now, this, is, this timing of this mechanic is going to be important for twisters way later in the fight because it's the same it's the same movement um, and I'll explain that as we go later you know obviously stay away from the tank um, and here's sort of the big first mechanic uh, that comes up strength of the ward I guess and now uh, this is where you'll see that I run back to the edge of the stage I have that sort of you know range DPS luxury and uh, you'll see these, you'll see the guys like appear on the outside of the stage. Now, the thing is, is that the way our marker set up is that um, these guys will charge through the middle. So this guy will charge through blue, this guy will charge through yellow, and this guy will charge through purple. Um, so that means that red, in this case, now it can be any color at any point, but that means red are going is going to be the safe. Uh, spot and the safe spot is kind of like a little pizza slice um, right here now let's see if I can do the pizza slice um, so yeah these will eventually be the safe spots um, so when we see like the guys call down we look at it and we're like okay you know uh, red and we call out red you know and and here's our positioning right so it's the same thing on the other side um, but we, but uh, one of the things that's important, which you've already noticed, and if you're doing this fight, 
is you have your um, little Mitsubishi symbol right here, um, and they're all throughout this. They're all uh, scattered throughout the stage, and then you have these tick marks right here, um, which is like a perfect indicator on like how to position yourself uh, when you're standing on the outside. So definitely use those to your advantage. And as you can see here, we have one person here. We have one person um, standing right, uh, right behind the marker. Um, right in this spot right here. Um, myself, I'm on the left, and uh, Venom is on the right. And as you can see, once you get set up, uh, everybody will get an AoE on them. Um, actually, let's back it up so you can see like the AoE and see if I can time it right. So you can see there's a, there's a little bit of time to move. Um, there's a little bit of time to move like once you see these you can like scooch over by like a space um, But it's it's really it's really small So, you know if you're within one or two ticks of this then you're going to be fine And I think you can see me like kind of move a little bit to the right now at this point um, At this point I stay at the wall, but but everybody will have their own set of timings Um this uh, this expanding AOE circle right here that you've seen like a thousand times before. Sometimes, uh, if you're at the wall, it will explode. How should I say it? Sometimes it'll explode like this, like really close to the wall, and then it goes out. And then if it explodes really close, like you know, for me, I run in faster. Like these guys right here who are who are closer. Um, they'll they'll run in after this first explosion but just don't be greedy you know if it's if it's like this wait for your second explosion um and it, it's kind of funny because sometimes you'll see us uh you'll see us do like a little wiggle as in like you know oh i'm about to move in um but i gotta wait for that second one now here here's kind of the things that i'm looking for when um that thing is up First, I determine my safe spot right here, right? Safe spot, move into, uh, move into the position or however you want to move in to position yourself. Now I'm looking for the expanding AOE. And then as soon as the, as soon as the expanding AOE hits, like you can see like over here, there, that's the first AOE that comes out is the same time um, this dude, uh, one of the knights, appears on the outside of the stage and so one of the things that I'm looking for is that I'll look for the expanding AOE run in and at this point I am I am going to be searching the stage not for Thornton but the knight that is on the outside of the stage right here because what happens is that this guy will now be the new south um, how I work it out in my brain and Thornton once he disappears he'll dash to the opposite side of where this knight is over here um, so So here's how we do that or here's how I see this um, <clears throat> We all run straight in and another thing that I'm also looking for at this point is the cast bar on Thornton because he's gonna do the line AoE that hits everybody um, <clears throat> So run in, and uh, if I back it up an another second, you can see here that I. The most important thing is I'm keeping my eyes on the uh, on the cast bar right here, as well as the AOEs that are coming in. Um, so if we do this, right? So I go in, look for the uh, looking for the AOEs, look at the cast bar, run in, cast bar is done, move out of the way, look for look for the knight on the outside of the stage somewhere. And then, and then that's when, that's when you either get the blue stuff on you or you don't get anything. And if you get the blue stuff, um, uh, the way that we set it up, the way that you can see right here is that, um, let's see if I have my camera angle correctly. Yeah, I kind of do. Um, so the way that we set it up is that three people will get the random blue shit on them. Um, the two tanks will pick up. Uh, their tethers and then there'll be three people right here that don't have anything so the three people that have blue um, Pretty much this is why you look for this axe guy because um, Or the warrior um, on the outside of the stage because this guy is going to be the center blue how I think about it and then um, These two knights in the middle right here will always appear 
in this configuration where this knight is is uh, appearing. One of the things that, um, if I clear this and back up for a little bit and show you this mechanic again, um, one of the things that happened with Thordin is that um, earlier in our pulls, we were looking at where Thordin jumps to, and the thing is, is that Thordin's too slow because at this point you can at this point you can look at this night because that's where the new configuration or the new orientation of the stage is going to be but if you're looking at Thordan when he jumps um, you're gonna be you're gonna be pretty much too slow in reacting into positioning yourself uh, to where to, to where to go um, now one of the things that you probably noticed uh, was that this guy right here um, if you're in the middle, what happens is that if you're running across like this, there's a chance that you're going to pick up these tank tethers. And if you, if you accidentally, as a ranged DPS or a DPS, if you accidentally take, pick up one of these tank tethers, like it's kind of, it's really hard for the tanks to get, um, to pick them back up again. Um, so you basically like, basically how I work it out in my mind is like this. Um, let's see here. Let me back it up for a second. So I'm looking for the guy, that's the guy, so that's, you know, so up here is, up here is the new south. You know, I get the blue shit on me. Um, so I'm like, okay, that's the new south, I know which positions I need to go for the blue shit. Um, and then, uh, up here, um, I'm, I'm running down and around, uh, this guy. And then I'm positioning myself here. Now, uh, now a couple of different things, right? So. The tanks are doing their thing, you know, the tanks are doing their thing up there. They are grabbing the tether. The tethers appear on them, I think. Um, and so they run. Um, and the reason we used we used to do the tethers like straight like this, which I think most groups do. But one of the reasons why we crossed the streams was because that's how you solve everything. Plus, um, it just gave uh, it gave the tanks and and these guys a little bit more room to work with um and the same thing with here the same thing with here right like our our group used to like position ourselves on the mitsubishi symbol directly if we had a blue thing right like if you're if you're on the south thing you just placed yourself like right in front of there but if you have the blue thing right here um we took a step like one tick right here let me, let me clear this we took one step in to where we were kind of like almost at this one tick um just because the AOE explosion around the blue thing kind of sometimes it would reach the tank and it would sneak the tanks it would it would hit them um you know nobody's fault but taking one tick down this way um gives everybody in this configuration uh, plenty of room um and then you'll notice that there are towers uh there are towers in front of people um so then after all this crap goes off you want to get in your tower the three people here that didn't have any towers, um, your group will figure out how to call this, um, but looking in, we call either left, center, or right. Um, or actually, it'll be, it'll be left, center, or right from that orientation. Uh, the tanks will be here and here. They get stunned. They can't do anything. Um, but the rest of us will get the, uh, we'll get the tethers. Um, and, uh, and also here, if you don't have comms, which... I don't know why you're raiding this fight without comms, um, but uh, usually uh, a couple of folks uh, they they keep they keep quiet, but they take their characters and they and they sort of position themselves as in which tower they're going to run to up here. Um, so it gives uh, it gives a little the it gives a little uh, neat indicator if you know if you don't want to you know talk out on comms, which is you know totally cool. Um, I shouldn't have uh, removed that. Let me get that back. There we go. All right. Um, yes, carrying on. So all this stuff, the red stuff explains, all explodes. All of this stuff goes off. Everybody gets in their towers. The tanks take their things. They get stunned. Everybody runs in. You get healed up. Ain't for ancient Quagga. <laughs> and you take you take some AOE hits here. Um, and uh, this is usually a little bit of downtime, uh, so it's, you know, DPS, uh, you know, however you guys do your mitigation, which I'm sure you guys have been doing plenty of mitigations. Other guides have done this. Other guides have, have gotten you squared away. 
Um, but we're just going over kind of like how my mind works. Um, and at this point, if you have any, um, and at this point, our DPS is uh, pretty on point. That what I do is I try to, I try to save uh, some bursts um, for later. And I'm sure that happens with like sort of every other job as well. Um, but uh, but this is the point where I sort of just save uh, a lot of um, OGCD bursts. Uh, you know, build up my gauge bars, like that type of thing. Um, now this one is uh, the next mechanic. There are two ways that I've seen this done. Um, the first is, uh, well, the first the first is two people, two random people will get markers on their head, um, and we just call out one far too close, which means um, that if we back this up for a second, and this one's just going to be a little bit weird. I really can't explain all of it because I kind of don't understand a lot of it, but. Here's kind of the gist, right? Uh, two knights will appear in the middle. Their their weapons will either be pointing in, like this, or outside. And depending on which ways their weapons are pointing, will determine which way you go on the outside of the stage. Uh, and there is one guy that appears sort of like in either this position. Or he can appear here, or like he's off. He's he, he's not in the middle. Um, and so when we call out uh, one far too close, um, the person with the one marker is gonna go uh, down over here. Uh, it's actually off screen. And then the person with the with the two marker is gonna go right is gonna go right here. So you can see uh, how we how we played this out. Whoop. And uh, the rest of the party has static positions. There's going to be Thornton. He has a giant eyeball. And you can see me rotate my camera around to check out the other giant eyeball. And because the weapons are being pointed in, we are rotating counterclockwise. And then we sort of stop in, at this point, and then we go back. Now the other, um, now the other method that parties have used, uh, I'm not too familiar with. We tried it. We we felt like this worked better for our group, um, but the other method is like you're at the wall, you move like you move like a certain amount of ticks over, and then um, and then the AOEs like appear around you, and then you continue to go, um, and then you avoid all of the AOEs. Um, the reason why we did this timing, uh, and maybe it's good for your group, was because uh, the movement is exactly the same regardless on which side you're on but the movement is slightly different the timing is slightly different if you're if you're moving uh, one quarter and then another quarter um, and I'm sorry I don't have any video for that uh, to sort of explain it but just know that like this method that we use where you go back like this way and then and then come back into the middle uh, the timing is more consistent so that might help out uh, your group with uh, with doing this method um, but you know with all mechanics and with all like establishing things with this fight um, if it's working for you thumbs up like keep doing it don't change it because you're like looking at this guy um, here's where it gets interesting these um, without going too much in detail everybody need everybody needs to get a first set of towers everybody needs to get a second set of towers two people will get meteors on their heads um, I have a meteor, Pally has a meteor, and our meteor people, uh, what we'll do is we'll call out, uh, let's see here. <clears throat> My brain is thinking, bloop, 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 because it, it, here's the thing you need to learn about this mechanic. There are several different configurations that happen, but at the but but they're but as you see it and as you progress more they're they're kind of all the they're kind of all the same um it just the the complicated nature of of any of these mechanics is that everybody has to know how to do everything so as you're progressing you're gonna just have to know what to do um and there is no way around it uh but here's how i work it out in my mind right like um 
my position is here. I'm with. Uh, it's ba basically you have to set up a. Uh, you have to set up a healer. A, you have to set up a healer and a DPS and a tank and a DPS um, on each one of these um, spots, like right here in the um, right here in the thing. And we have static spots um, before the meteors come out. Once meteors come out. Um, the people with the meteors will go to the one and the A marker, and then whatever role is uh, whatever role needs to switch out of the person with the meteor. Um, th those those are the people that need to switch. Yeah, explaining it like uh, like I'm terrible at this game because I actually am terrible. Um, let me see if I can uh, wrap your brain around it. Um, because you've probably already done it before. Um, but at this point, after we get out of that mechanic, we have our set positions, right? I go to the one marker, I look for a meteor on my head. I turn around and what I'm looking for is, um, what I'm looking for is uh, the opposite tower. Um, Cause what, what the meteor person is gonna do, and you'll see this, you'll see this next, is that they're gonna have to run to the edge, um, get in a tower and then run around the circle. Um, and you can see Pally over here, he's going to be running to one, and then the DPS, whoever's over here, I think it's Ziza, he's going to be coming out and, like, running back over to C. Um, and is this, uh, is this super cocked? It is super cocked. Did I do this right? I don't even know. But this is actually one of the hardest, uh, hardest bits to do. Um, so, you, yeah, oh yeah. So, golly. Maybe this isn't the clear video, because I normally don't do this. Yep, it's not the clear video. Ha, okay. <laughs> uh, that's funny. You know what? I'm going to leave it in the video anyway. But that configuration right there is one of the harder ones, because you have to stutter step. If the towers are opposite each other, um, then you can just continue to run, which is like no problem. Uh, let's skip ahead to um, where we actually got our clear. Oh, that's a little bit further in the fight. All right, so we're back to here. Um, but as you can see, uh, the tanks and healers uh, got him, so the tanks and the healers were switching because the meteor person needs to be here. Um, and then what's happening is that I'm looking for a tower, right? Because two people are at each of these, um, you know, one and two. So two people are at each of these markers right here. There's gonna be a giant AOE that appears on him. It's a giant ice AOE. Um, and then the person with the marker always goes to the outside. If there is a tower on the inside and you do not have towers on the outside, you're going to be running on the inside, right? So like for here, there's only one tower on the outside. And if you're, if you're, uh, for us, if we're here, uh, the DPS always goes out, the tanks and healers always go in as sort of like a, a sort of like a guideline, a rule. Um, but over here, it's the same way. Our DPS friend will go out, our healer, our, our, I'm sorry, our tank will go out, our DPS will go in, and then up here you can see that there's one tower here and then two towers here. So if you're if you're two people right here, right, both of you are going to go out. And then we have a rule for like the DPS always takes the left one and the healers and tanks always take the right one. Um, or the or but it depends for the north and south like guys, because because for instance uh, this meteor person right here, they're going to take the only tower that's uh, here on the right side or on the left side looking at the camera. So that means this meteor person over here needs to take this right right tower over here because these towers are opposite of each other, right? So I know this is like <laughs> I know this is like John fucking Madden right here, but hopefully that kind of gives you an idea of like how just my brain works. Um, but right here you can see I turn my camera I look at the outside I know that I have to run the inside I get in my inside tower and now the people that are and now um, and now all of us set up for knockback so we have so we have the people who have the meteors they're running around they're going to be running to the a towers right here um, and then the person who had the meteor right here they're gonna be running around the stage and they're going to be in the meteor tower all the way down here um, that way so, 
So that means that the people on the inter that people on the intercardinals on the inside will get knocked back to um, the intercardinals, right? Because what we have is that the DPS that are going out here for the first set of towers, they're always going to be taking the east and west ones. Um, and it just kind of works itself out like that. And look, if you're at this point, like you've seen this mechanic and you've already looked at guides and your party is already familiar with the, this strategy. Um, but this is sort of the thing that we came up with um, that makes sense. Uh, one of the things that I, uh, I noticed um, when I'm posi positioning my character on the inside is, um, is that uh, I stand in these little like diamonds um, and that will knock back your character uh, properly into, um, into your tower. Um, for the people on the outside, uh, one of the things you have to do is look for here, it's Conviction. Uh, conviction is the knockback ability. Um, so the, for the people on the outside, um, you can see Tiger here popped her arm's length. Uh, pop your anti-knockbacks um, if you're on the outside. If you're on the inside, um, don't pop your anti-knockbacks because you'll get knocked into the towers. Um, and, and you're going to do this mechanic like a thousand times, so you'll eventually get it. But, but just know there is a system, even though it seems a bit chaotic. After all those towers disappear, we go back to A, Thornton will appear, and, and at this point, you want to pop all of your um, two minutes, two minute buffs right here, um, because they'll come up at the at the right time at the second phase um, in, order to de in order to down uh, Kyle. So pop all your things. Um, one of the things I'm doing here is I'm saving, uh, I'm saving all of my, um, I'm saving all of my like uh, gauge and debuffs. Um, every single thing in this fight hurts. It hits hard. Blah blah blah. Um, right here, Thordon will turn. You want to get behind him. You want to look at which way he swings his sword. He swings his sword that way, which is a giant AOE. So we run to that direction. Just run there, and then stop, continue to DPS. Now at this point, um, it depends on your group, but what we like to do, at least I hope what we like to do, is to hold it until he does his second broad swing. So we hold a bit of DPS, we get behind him as he turns, he slashes once, slashes twice, slashes three times, then we go to the middle, um, we buff up, we take him down, and now it's the transition. So one of the things that we do with the transition is that the party stays away from A because that's north. A tank will provoke Ninhog, it'll go north. Um, and then we just dump everything into him. Um, you have to be careful here because his line is, is a cleave, so just gotta be careful, stay away from that. Ah yes, the numbers. Um, this was the mechanic that, uh, that took us a very long time to kind of process our minds around. Um, and there's really no, there's really not a good way to explain it because it's all about timing and it's all about feeling and it's all about like the, the system in which you set up. Um, so how we did it was, um, for, or how I, how I tend to look at it, right? Like everybody gets a number on their head. When you get a number one, two, or three, you're going to be doing a certain set of patterns depending on. Um, where you stand and your position. So, for instance, I'm a number two. I know exactly what I need to do. Um, and these are our uh, preliminary setups. We call these the first setups. Well, I don't know exactly what we call these, but we call them a setup um, because we'll have a one and three right here. We'll have another one and three, and we'll have another one and three. And anyone can get any number. Anyone can get any arrow that's coming out next. Um, so everyone will have to learn how to do each one of these positions as you go along. Um, and that's what took us the most time. So I got a number two. Um, so right now, uh, right now, the first thing is to look at this mechanic right here. Um, it could either be, it could either be in or out or out or in. Um, just remember that, uh, for now. So right now what we're doing is that everyone, uh, well, one of the things you do is first you look at what number you have and then 
And then these things come up, right? The arrows. Um, you can see these two arrows right here. You can see these two arrows right here. And how we call it out um, is we call out, you know, uh, ones and threes have arrows. Now, for us and the rules that we set up, if you have a if you have a down arrow, and you can only get up or down arrows, um, and the arrows uh, basically like you you place uh, like when you place down these towers, we call them. The arrow indicates like the direction of the tower that you're going to be placing. Um, so it's kind of weird, and I'm glad other raid groups figured this out. Uh, other than we did um, But the way I look at it in my brain in my brain is that I look at it and I say okay Do I have an arrow or do I not have an arrow if I don't have an arrow? All I need to do is worry about positioning if I do have an arrow I need to worry about positioning and the direction my character is facing um, And for us we have a set of rules um, The the person with the sort of the no arrows um, on the ones and threes, uh, they're going to be, they're going to be here at south. Um, the person that has the, the person that has the backwards facing arrow is going to be at three. The person who has the forward facing arrow is going to be at C. What you can also think about it is that your arrow is always going to be in the position, right? Like either here, or here, or here but the arrow is going to be facing the boss like quote unquote right um anyway let's continue because i don't know if i even understand this mechanic fully so the first thing that happens is that uh the tower the towers hit right and the towers will hit depending on the arrows um at this point uh at this point the the threes the threes will go get their towers and at this point, you can see that the threes have the forward arrow and the backward arrow. So like these threes um, with the arrows and this three with the no arrow down here. Uh, I don't know if you can see it. These right here. They know they know exactly where to go to stack for these towers that are going to that are going to appear because of their arrow directions. Right. And if they did not have arrows, then if we back up um, to our original positions, right. So we back up here. So we're DPSing, everything's great, everything's fine. Everybody gets their number. As soon as everybody gets their number, there it is. We get into our we get into our like setup positions, but these might not be permanent. These will these positions determine if we do or do not get arrows. Or no, I'm saying that wrong. These positions um, are sort of the where we go if we don't get an arrow. But if if the group, if the ones, twos, or threes get the arrows, then these positions are going to change. So it kind of covers all the bases of getting set up in this particular spot, right? So now we see who has arrows, and at this point, everybody gets in their first positions. So the first positions is if you don't have a tower going off. And you can see, like, everybody has a debuff counter right here is when the towers explode. Um, uh, so you can you can look at your debuff timer to when your towers goes off. Um, obviously, number ones, their towers go off first. Number twos, their towers go off second. Number threes, obviously, like, there we go. So now the threes move into their, into their positions. Um, we were all standing in because the mechanic was in. Now we move out. Once we move out, the towers, the towers appear, um, and then we have to go uh, place our pl twos place their towers. We all come back in the stack. the The ones who just the ones who just got their the ones who just placed their towers are going to get into the two towers. And then it's either an in or out or again, in or out again. Now we go and we get and we stay on the inside, go to the outside of the tower, and then stand in the tower. And then at this point, um, 
you want to like these guys right here these big old guys like everybody in other words this entire phase like everybody will do everybody will place one tower they will have to soak one tower and they will have to bait um one of these giant you know one of these uh, nidhog nidhog ads so as soon and as soon as the uh, as soon as this spear goes up that's when you can um, move away because you're actually what you're doing is you're actually taking this guy and he's gonna do a line AOE like this and you want to bait it away from the middle because everybody else is standing in the middle and the, the the tricky thing about this is basically the callouts where to stand um, how to how to kind of process it in your mind um, and that that was the that was the just the trickiness of it is that it, it just took us so long to realize you have to you have to do a couple of different things right and I'm gonna try to talk it out to to where uh, my mind is sort of like how it works so here we go so I'm looking at the boss first I'm gonna see what number do I get whatever number I get I'm gonna go to that position right so there's number two I'm gonna get into the number two position um, cause that's where we're, it, these are loose positions. They don't need to be exact, but they just need to tell you where you're going to go in the case of getting a, getting that number. So numbers disappear. And then we all get into sort of this, this next position. We look at the, you know, I look at the debuff right here, the cast bar, and then determine if it's in, in or out or out or in. And ones get set up. We look at our arrows, we call out ones and threes have arrows, so automatically I'm like, okay, great, I'm number two, I don't need to worry about my character's position. If I did have an arrow, I need to worry about it. So first this is in, or it's out, and then we go back in, and the people that need to get the towers get the towers. Two's place. We come back in. We call out side ones because the side ones get the two towers. Meanwhile, the um, meanwhile the threes uh, were soaking uh, were soaking the tower placements that the ones placed down. So not only they soak the towers, but they have to bait uh, they have to bait these guys, right? Um, and now the threes. The threes place their towers down. There they were, you know. The two side, the two side twos, like this two and this two, got theirs. Meanwhile, you have to do an in or an out. Um, oh, and the and the in or an out, it's basically like hit the the boss is like hit ring. Um, so that that's how you determine how far in or how how far out you need to be. Um, it's all about the boss's hit ring. But the two side twos are 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 doing the side twos and then the number one who um, did not have to get the two side twos on the second one the number one gets the south one so you can see we go that was in that was out we do the thing they bait here the lance moves up we move out of the way um, the tank is you know you want to be careful not to cross pass with the tank because the AOE is coming through and it'll hit everybody um, and now we have to watch out for uh, Dragon uh, Dragon Lance, um, which is basically he'll turn and face one party member at random, and then he'll throw a cleave. So you can see all of us uh, running away from it. And at this point, all of us pop our two minutes. And now here are towers. Now this was an easy set of towers, um, but what we did was we determined uh, who get we determined um, tower position. So we needed. Um, so how we did it was we needed a, a, a tank and a ranged DPS, a tank and a ranged DPS, a melee DPS and a healer, and then down here, uh, down here was a melee DPS and a healer. Now the thing is, is that the melees are going to have to get the second towers, the healers and the range are going to have to bait uh, the Nidhogg ad ads when they come down and when they come down. The two tanks will have to get, there's two tethers that appear one from the boss, one from Nidhogg, and then one from an ad uh, that appears in these towers. Now, the other thing with these towers is that a tow these towers can have 
one, one, yes, they can have one, two, three, or four of these tower thingies uh, in the tower. I know I'm saying tower a lot, but that's that's the thing. So what you have to do is you have to place four people. Uh, well, you have to place the certain amount of correct people in that, in that tower. So, and among the four towers out there, you'll always have, um, you'll always have eight people and eight like pillars of light to to have to, you know, square that away. In this case, it was two, two, and two, uh, so it was really easy for everybody. You don't have to do anything. But the melees and the tanks, you have to you have to set up sort of a, a conditional thing with your team. Um, to look at each tower and to be like, okay, if there's only one tower, like, like basically if, um, and this entire fight is all conditionals, right? Like if this, then that. Um, so the tower right here, right? If, if there's only one, uh, if there's only one pillar in this tower right here, then that means that our rule is that we have the, the tank, they have to either go to this tower or to this tower, right? Um, and uh, same with uh, same with over here if there's only one now if there's three that means that this person right here will stay in this tower um, and the other the other folks who have like one versus uh, you know the other the other folks who just have one they have to look and see like which tower needs needs folks in it um, not quite sure how to better explain it uh, other than that but for the most part it's you know, um, this was an easy setup. It's two, two, and two. Um, so the towers come down. Um, you can see the two tethers right here. Um, the tether, like the the two tanks, will have to pick up the tethers. So uh, one of the things that one of the things that we do as DPS is that we always stand either on the intercardinals or on the cardinals, um, just so it makes the tank and we, and the tanks are always going to be on the intercardinals. For taking these like soak damages, um, that's just one thing that we uh, we sort of uh, keep in mind as we're going along. So there's the two explosions. Everything jumps away, and uh, it happens pretty fast. But you know, you'll get it. It just takes time to learn every single facet of this mechanic. But but once you do, it's just so satisfying to like get everything down. And, and to be perfectly honest, it's it's totally cool. Um, Nidhogg will do uh, Drake and Lance. Uh, he'll always point to one. He'll always point south. Um, he'll do his enrage. But if your DPS is high enough, um, you're totally cool. Um, one of the things that I will say that is um, that we never used, but we kind of did, not really, but is we uh, we. We, we we practice this mechanic um let's just say uh out in um out in front of our fc house and we practice this we practice it a lot to help out with uh with with getting through it um but once we did get that practice once you see it enough times it'll it'll all make sense um and the call outs will be you know and and you'll get through it it'll be no problem uh so here we charge up we buff up um, we all stand on the one marker because there's two tethers that come out um, that gives you buffs and every single person needs to get these buffs in order to damage the eyes that are coming up next. So there they are. You stack the things. Um, the other pretty neat thing is that when um, <clears throat> if you have your uh, if you have your uh, enemy list uh, up um, and also to like if you look uh, if you look on the um, if you look on these little things, you can see like uh, a portrait of uh, Lady Iceheart and Horchafont, which is kind of cool. Um, which is which is funny. I hope I said his name right, um, or else I'm just gonna get ragged forever. But ah, that's fine. So everybody has to get those two buffs, and then we all spread out to our sort of uh, loose positions right here. Um, AOEs come out. Now the way that we got this set up is that um, we'll have a range DPS here, range DPS, healer, and um, healer. Uh, so they're kind of standing uh, in this like four box thing. Um, we have a tank here, and then we have a tank here. Um, 
Vale eventually move over there. He he's, he he runs around. Um, and then we have uh, melee and melee. Um, so that's sort of our positioning. And as we're going through, everybody will get a set of tethers. Um, and it's either a blue tether or a red tether. And the uh, how we set up these tethers is that the melees will have to get the red tether. The ranged DPS will have to get the blue tethers. And uh, that's for the that's for this first part. So whoever needs to get the opposite tether, all they do is they run under um, they run under um, Estinian uh, here, like like this bright old light thing. Just everybody runs in. Um, you won't see me run in. I'll I'll get into my position. But you can see everybody that needs a tether swap, they just run in there, swap. Um, one of the things that you can do on the swap is like look at your debuff bar and one of the things that I look for is that I, if I need a swap I look at my debuff bar to see if um, to see if this this pattern of red and blue debuffs is uh, is proper and then if it's proper that's when I move back out but here we go um, so these yellow orbs at the uh, at the edge here um, once they go, once they go Super Saiyan, uh, they go big, uh, the two melees and the two tanks will take them. Um, and then after they take that orb, uh, you can see the two tanks right here are passing to me. On, on the other side over here, we have the healers passing their, um, their, uh, tethers to the melee. And the whole entire mechanic that happens, that, that works with this, right? Is that these red tethers the only way that the red tethers the only way that this left eye can be damaged like significantly to clear the phase is if is if the people with the red tethers take the damage from these expanding uh, and exploding orbs um, if somebody with the blue tether gets hit then the blue tether will heal up the other eye over here and that's bad and you won't clear um, so that's kind of how that works um, so you can see that everybody switched their tethers, and now I'm now I'm looking for this orb to go up. We all we all soak our tethers. You can see here and here. We all soak our tethers. There we go. And now at this point, um, we pass we pass back our tethers. Um, well, I pass my tether back to our tank, uh, our tank friend, um, just so it makes it like easier. <laughs> I I guess I should say I'm like the less capable person of the group because you know it takes me about um 1.5 to twice as long to learn how these mechanics work um and i get ragged on it all the time which is kind of funny um we pass our tethers back and then everybody with the blue tethers runs underneath um runs underneath the 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 right eye here and then you can see the pat you can see all the pattern right we have this 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 and then eventually another tank will be here What'll happen is that dive bombs will happen uh, on two people, and <clears throat> and pretty much uh, when the dive bombs hit, you just have to like the first people that are taking it. You have to be aware um, that you you get you get a debuff from the dive bomb, and so if we go here, yeah, mirage dive will come in, right? So two people will get hit. Those. Two people will get hit. The melees need to go out and get their and swap tethers from blue to red, because remember, like, you need to have damage to the red tethers and the blue tethers cannot take damage, or for the people that have it. So the melees go out. They swap tethers. Um, the two people that just got hit comes to the inside. Now the two people with red. Now the two people with um. And and you can see right here. There's uh there's the um. I don't know, I think it's like piercing debuff. Um, I don't know what debuff it is, but you get a debuff. And if you get hit with another dive bomb, you're dead. So you can't get hit again. Um, and uh, for here, this is where uh, the melees go out, range DPS goes out, right? Range DPS gets their thing. They come back in. And now the two people, the two people in the, who have the blue, so the two people who have the blue, uh, thing that I think it's like the timings that they're gonna for it's gonna fall off 
They're the ones that are going to have to get the third one. I don't exactly know how it works. Um, but I think... Yeah, yeah. So it's, it's whoever... All I know is that you got to pay attention to your piercing debuff. And whoever's debuff is going to be falling off um, to get those third ones, that's the one that's going to be falling off. Or that those are the two folks that need to get it. Um, it takes time. You'll figure it out. Um, and then uh, then there's two more hits. And then after that last hit, um, take down the right eye first. Always take down the right eye. Don't disengage to the other eye. Um, once that first one is down, then you can DPS the next one. And then, um, and then you got down the eye phase. Um, I know it's not a crazy explanation, but well, there you go, right? It's just sort of how my mind like works and how I think. Now at this point, all your two minutes should be up. So pop all of your two minutes and you'll recognize that this is like, you know, the same as the first phase. Um, but here we've switched it around instead of tanks first, we have healers first because we want to have the healers, um, heal, mitigate, um, do all sorts of crazy things because, uh, because our, our boy, he's going to come out here and he's going to take the spear for us and we're going to try to save his life um, in order to progress to the next phase. Um, everybody will get changed just like just like normal. Um, the tank right here, uh, you have to wait until uh, he comes out in order to pop uh, limit break because um, <clears throat> because when you pop limit break, that's when uh, Hortrafont will also get the, the LB3 limit break. And you have to do that in order to save everybody because just every everything gets hit hard here. Um, healers just went. Then we have the DPS that came out. Um, uh, and here's the same thing of what I'm looking at before. I just looked at my partner that the 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 cone AOE came out first. Um, <clears throat> now now at this point I'm looking at Pally up here. I'm looking. Uh, my thing popped off. I look at Pally. He places his. I would move about halfway. You know, that explodes. I'm looking at my debuff down here. Actually, let me get Big Arrow. Let me get Big Arrow. I'm looking at down here. To my debuff. I move out. I place my thing down. I go back into the middle. Uh, everything is copacetic, which is a fancy word for all good. Um, and then we DPS the spear down. Um, it depends sometimes you can build up gauge and build up like you know ammo and all that stuff here but honestly just like the dps check for thornton 2 right here is so easy just like just burn the spear down because you don't want to die to something that you know it's just a dps check um here we are thornton 2 um Standard operating procedure, tank, tank, party at the back, tank at the front. He does, he does his AoE thing. I think he stomps. I don't know if he stomps or not. Um, not sure about provoked or anything. But here's the, uh, here's sort of the bigger first mechanic, um, Wrath, Wrath of the Heavens. Um, now, now there's a lot of different things that happen here. Um, First, uh, I pop in the middle, and sometimes, and these these guys right here, you can see they. This is very convenient. They popped right in front of right in front of my camera. Um, sometimes they will not be over there. They they will they will pop over to the side or or behind you. Um, and what you can do is like if you have a good set of headphones, you can listen to, uh, to when they slam down um, because you'll hear them and like you'll hear them behind you. So you can then. Um, you know, you can then uh, check out where they. Um, you then you can then know where they are by not knowing where they are. Like for instance, if if um, if I hear the sound effect of them jumping down, but my camera right here, I don't see them. Um, like I don't see them here, and this is all like completely blank. I know that they're behind me, and I can reposition my camera um, as well to get to to get set up for this mechanic. Anyway. So this happens, right? Whoop! That doesn't happen. That's weird. What went on? I'm confused. I think I need to get back to where. I think I need to get back there because I hit like a wrong button. Um, 
Yes, okay, we're close. Alright, Wrath of the Heavens. We're back. So weird. Actually not weird, I'm just I just hit hit things wrong. Um <clears throat> okay. So here here's the thing. What I like to do is like my character in here, I like to wiggle around. And when I wiggle around, um, I can see that either either these tethers are going to be attached to me or this blue thing is going to be attached. Um, so essentially, you're going to have two tethers that come out on people. Um, you're going to have this blue thing that comes out on people. And then some people are going to get nothing. So here's, here's what to do when all that stuff comes out. So if you have nothing, you run to this side and... What I'm looking for right here, actually, let me back it up for a second. Um, <clears throat> so one of the things what I look for um, is that the these guys will dash through, um, and if I if I have nothing like this line is kind of like, you know, if I stand right here, it, it's it's totally cool. Um, this entire phase is sort of like just micro adjustments, you know. Um, <clears throat> But I kind of I kind of look at it as, as like you know from here to here and here to here you're totally safe from not getting hit with um, with this guy's dash. Um, and I should not have closed that. Let's open that back up again. There we go. So hopefully hopefully um, one of the things is here. Let me back up for a second. I think it's backing up for 10 seconds. <clears throat> That's okay. So one of the things I try to do is that you can see, um, you can see this tether, and th there's this line on the stage. There's this crack on the stage, and and with this tether, if I have the tether, I try to line it up uh, in this crack, like going across the stage. So that's one thing to do, and and also too, like everybody will have to learn these mechanics. Um, you'll have to learn the tethers, you'll have to learn the blue shit. Um, and as you can see over here, like, what just happened was that there was a, there was a bit of a lightning bit. Uh, let's see here. Just trying to get us, trying to get us back to the, back to the spot. Um, <clears throat> so right here we get to the wall, and then there's Thunderstruck right over here, so two people will get lightning. Um, and as you can see here, one and two. Um, and then uh, there are positions for lightning um, from before. Uh, or, or afterwards, I should say. So these tethers, so this tether right here lines up with this crack, um, as you can see. And then the, um, and then pretty much the person with the blue, they're on the opposite side of the stage. Um, right where I am um, to make that uh, see if my camera angle picks it up right yeah so this is the person with the blue the like this tether is going right through here through this crack right this tether is going through the stage uh, to this person right here and then at this point what I do is you're gonna get a dive bomb marker above your head um, <clears throat> And you're you're also gonna you're also gonna have to know if you have the lightnings as well. For the person with the dive marker, right right now, what I'm do, what I'm in my mind, I'm looking at okay. First off, where do I need to go? Because the axe guy is where we want to end up after all of this all of this crap is you know completely done. So, um, the uh, the person with the dive bomb marker, they're gonna go stand like pretty much right here. You don't want to stand on top of the Mitsubishi symbol because uh, Twintanya or one of the dragons will dash right through the middle. You don't want that. Um, what you want is you want to stand on either like one tick to the left or one tick to the right. Um, so that way the dive bomb will go this way or to go that way. Um, and you and and this guy this guy right here, the sorcerer with the staff, is how I look at it. Um, this person can be. Uh, pretty much either here or they can be where the axe guy is right so you have to be mindful of where the staff guy is in order to take the dive bomb and place it you know place it in the particular spot 
um, and then everyone else, uh, what will happen is that one person will get fireballs, the other person will get meteors. You know, basically two people will get giant fucking AoEs on them. So what you have to do is you have to kind of do a, a U-turn, right? You have to kind of go down this way and then you turn back up to um, the axe guy. Because if you just go straight into the axe guy, which is the safe spot after all of this is said and done, your AoEs are going to overlap um, everybody and kill everybody. So what you want to do is, you know, if I have AoEs and I run this way and around, your AoEs will go one, two, three, and then four, and then you're clear, all clear to go, and then you have a safe spot around here. <clears throat> um, and then the lightning person goes here, lightning person goes here, and you're all good to go. So let's play and see where we do. So, oh yeah, and twisters, okay. Um, so, let me back this up uh, totally again. Okay, remember at the beginning of the fight where it was that first mechanic that I was showing you? So these twisters are, are the same thing, that, that the one where it's the very first mechanic that Thornton throws out, right? So right here, um, so if I, if I back this up, one of the things that I'm looking for is is also the cast bar of King Thornton, right? Um, <clears throat> and, well, there's Twisting Dive, there's this, and then, um, and then as soon as that Twisting Dive, as soon as that, as soon as the cast bar for Twisting Dive ends, wait, like, ever so slightly, and then move in. It's a, it's totally a timing thing. Um, what got me tricked up at the very, what got me tricked up before was that, um, you're trying to get in, into position and then you like completely forget about everything that comes up. Um, so it was, it was very tricky to figure out, but eventually you'll, eventually you'll get it. So, okay. We run to the wall. As I'm running to the wall, I'm looking at twisting dive. As soon as you get to the wall, you, the lightnings, the lightnings appear. And then once all this stuff goes off, boom, you move, you move in slightly, right? So like you can move in the way I kind of figured out in my brain is like by the time you're in the center and you run all the way to the wall and the twisting, all the stuff goes off. Now all you have to do is run into this inner circle right here, um, a little bit. And, uh, it depends on everyone's like different timings. Um, you run in a little bit, you know, and then you can see all of the twisters start to form behind people. And now our friend, uh, our friend Pally is going to move down to, um, to the south to bait this dodge right here, left or right. Be careful on all these twisters around. Make sure you don't run on, run on top of them because that's happened before. And then, uh, at this point, once you, once everybody's sort of in position, um, there's going to be a protein wave that comes out that hits everybody. Um, and so you want to spread out, uh, clock position esque, but you can't spread you can't assign clock positions because of just where you are in the stage. So um, what we do is that uh, we we spread out right like the person who has the tether kind of moves up. Um, to the, the person with the blue uh, kind of stays where they are. The person who's like most likely where I am kind of moves over this way, um, but not too far over this way because we want to leave space for this AO. We, we want to leave space because an AOE is going to come on on us. So I kind of move like, like right here. Um, but in doing so, we spread out, you know, spread out a bit. AOE has come in, and then you can see me, uh, and you can see uh, Usada over here. What you'll see is you'll see her um, run this way, and then make a U-turn back this way. And for folks over here, right, you make a U, -t you, you go south, and then you make a U-turn um, back to uh, the thing. And and this is the same thing I do. I start to run this way because I don't know if I'm going to get it or not, and everybody kind of doesn't know. But once the mechanics are out and somebody's getting hit. Then you do know, and then you can just sort of make a beeline right for the thing. Uh, kind of like what I did there. So you can see right here, our party groups up in the middle. There were the two lightnings that went off. 
So I run down that way, and I come back, and then you can see, um, you can see Amon and Ziza, like he's gonna take uh, that, he's gonna take that side, and then down here, there's the AoE that comes in, and you can be slightly outside um, because the AoE, the AoE indicator appears like a little bit sooner than um, than when it goes off. So it's like, you know, plus it's you know it's lag, not lag, but like server delay, right? So Tiger here is actually in. So same with Usada, uh, but you know, on my server, I'm just like they're out. How did they dodge that attack? You know, it's. MMO, MMO mechanics, um, crazy stuff, right? And then you can see here these uh, the a the the lightning plumes right here in the back, um, and that's all good to go. So, and after we do, and and it's it's the the AOE circle here, it's the dynamo, it's very very forgiving. So you you'll have plenty of room and plenty of time to like you know uh, mess around with this. Um, but backing up all the way to it, like, here's how my mind sort of works in, uh, in doing this mechanic, sort of in real time. So he's going to jump. I'm going to look for the dragons. After the dragons are there, point my camera up there. Do I have shit on me? No, I don't. So I'm going to go over to this spot. There it is. I'm going to make sure that I look for, you know, look for where the warrior is. I spread out and then I'm going to make a U-turn. Go to the U-turn. Do I have lightning? No. Um, if I did, I would go to the lightning bit, um, stand in the AOE, and and that's that's how you do it. Um, and let me back up and just sort of talk through what it would be if uh, just sort of the uh, the other folks, um, not necessarily my character, but um, but some other characters who have, or some other of our players who are, who are doing the other mechanics, right? So stop here. Reorient my camera. If I have blue stuff, um, here, let me back up for a sec. <clears throat> so he jumps away. Look at where the, the stuff is popping up. Um, at this moment in my mind, I'm like, okay, blue marker to here. If I. Everyone over here has nothing. And then if I have tethers, it's opposite. It's opposite of, of these two tanks. And that's it. So that's what I'm thinking at this point, right? Stuff pops on. I have nothing. I go over here. This is kind of random, randomly spread out. Um, <clears throat> wait for the stuff to wait for the stuff to go. Uh, as I'm running, I'm looking at my. Um, as I'm running, I'm looking at my twisters. Do I have Do I have the dive bomb? If I do, I run. I run to the south. At this point, spread out. There's the protein wave. Come back in, and then go into uh, the safe spot. Pop all our debuffs, and then it's complete. Um, it, se it seems fast. It seems chaotic, but once you know the system, and timing, timing, timing. It's all about the timing, knowing when to move. Uh, just remember, looking at that. Um, you know, there's a provoke here, and like a heavenly heal, and. I don't know what the tanks do. They just they just do their tank things. Um, sorry if you're a tank. I I have no idea how any of this works, and I panic every time I try to play a tank. Um, <clears throat> but you'll you'll figure out like the different things, and there's diagrams and posts and everything. All right, death to the heavens. Um, I know how this works. Explaining it back to you, probably look at some other guides. How we do it is we is I basically look at where the axe dude is. That's where he is. He's the new north. Um, we all line up. We have set positions for being in our line. And then four people will get doom. Four people will get nothing. So right here, the, we have the doom people move up. Now at this point, depending on, depending on your position in the line and depending on who gets the doom will determine your kind of spot. And... Let's see if, uh, and basically I, I don't think I can explain it. The only thing I do know is that I've been on the outside. If I don't have nothing, I go here. If I have doom, I go here. So essentially, uh, the way that I work it out in my brain is that, um, <laughs> there, 
they're like, I don't understand mechanics well, and it's going to take a long time to understand, like, the, the if-thens, you know, like, uh, because if you think about it, right, like, <clears throat> if, if Ziza has third, if Ziza has third doom, and Usada and me have, have doom, then he is, then he is, then, and he is going to be going over here somewhere. Um, if, um, if, if he, if he's like the, I guess, hmm, how should I say it? Right? Like, one, two, th three, four. Right? Uh, and the way that, the way that I work it in my mind is like, you know, whoever, whoever has the first doom, they have, they have a doom spot that's going to the first. Whoever's number two doom, they're going to the second one. Whoever's number three has a spot. Whoever's number four has a spot. And this is one, two, three, four for people who have nothing. And each one of these people have a spot as well. And let's see if um, if we play it out, right? Okay. Right, because... Uh, it's a bit hard to see, but here's how we got it set up. Um, there's a lot of crap that goes on th throughout this phase, but here's our positioning, right? And, and you can find these positioning guides like all over the place, so please don't, you know, don't take my word for it. Um, you know, fourth doom is right here, third doom is here, second doom is opposite, and then, um, whatchamacallit, uh, you know, fourth doom, uh, this, this doom is right here. Um, <clears throat> we, the people with nothing technically don't get nothing, they actually get an Insuna that they place down um, because the people with the Doom have to get knocked back in order to clean the Insunas, or in order to clean their Doom with the Insunas. So if you think about it like right here, right? And you think about um, this is our spot, this is our spot, this is our spot, and this is our spot for the Insunas. Um, here we go. So Insuna, this is number four, this is three, this is two, this is one. Um, and then this is four, this is three, over here is two, and then this is uh, one for like the doom order. So so that's how it kind of all works out, right? Everybody lines up, you're either nothing, one, two, three, four, or doom, one, two, three, four, and you set it up, and you, and you go to your spots this way, and it's all dependent on the people in the line, because anybody can get doom, or anybody can get Insuna. So that's why we line up. So the people on the inside can be like, oh, okay, I'm number third doom, or I'm number two, um, and then everything's conditional. And then myself being on the furthest right, um, I only have two spots to go to um, because it's either I get doom or I don't get doom, but I'm always number four in the lineup. Um, and that's how I kind of work it out in my brain. Uh, let's see here. I'm going to do this and... We're gonna play this out. Um, one of the things that that helped me out actually um, was uh, if I'm south here, uh, you have that expanding AOE that that you need to deal with. Um, so what actually they actually suggested was um, if you're on the sides, um, if you're in here, it's sort of like the first phase. If you're in here, you can run straight in and you won't get hit with this. But if you're out on the sides like this, or right here, and these guys. You want to run kind of kind of down this way, wait for the thing to explode again, and then I curve and then I curve back in. That's sort of how I, I work it out in my brain. Um, let's get a plan. See, and then it explodes another again, and then we go. Um, and here's the here's the lineup, and um, I'll get a picture of a little sticky note that I do. Um, but uh, if I minimize this thing, you can see down here in this little corner. Um, right like in our in our chat history like this is the configuration of where the triangles and squares and the things go um <clears throat> so pretty much like if we have insunas we have a particular way to line up if we have dooms we have a particular way to, way to line up um one of the things that we noticed uh is that whoever's standing the furthest out um with their dooms will get the circles um and uh, the people that don't have anything will get the X's. There, there's a pattern. There's a pattern to this that makes it all work. 
Um, I just know that the people who are standing like outside with dooms uh, will get their dooms like going this way. And then the people on the inside uh, will get triangle or triangle. Um, essentially, the way that I work it out in my brain is that if I had Insuna, um, then I want to go like north of this axe guy. And if I had Doom, then I want to go south of the axe guy. Or at least, quote unquote, get knocked back. Um, so in this instance, I have an X. And now an X, both X's will have uh, no, uh, whatchamacallit, Insunas. Uh, let's see here. I think, I'm not sure, not 100% sure. But I think the Dooms will always get circles and like Insuna will always get X's. I think, I think, I'm not sure. Um, but, or, or, or maybe I think it might be um, that the two people standing furthest out should be Doom, and the two people that are standing furthest out get the circles um, always, and then the X's are in Sunas. So, in other words, like, this person will be, uh, in other words, this person was an Insuna. This person had nothing. This person had nothing. This person has nothing. Um, this person has Doom. This person has Doom. This person has Doom. This person has Doom. Um, and then, and then this X right here uh, will will get hit really south. Uh, they'll have nothing. So it's nothing, 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 nothing. And then Doom, 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 and Doom. And that's how. And that's how you get knocked back per. Uh, the letter configuration. That's how we work it out in our brains. So if we play this, you can see we all get into our like spots, and then um, you could be uh, you could be right on this uh, inside this circle. There's a circle right here, um, and then at this point too, you also want to be. Uh, I guess I should say uh, here. Let me back up for a second. So you get knocked back, right? But one of the things that we one of the things that you want to do is look away from the eyeballs again. So if we go here, so you can see like I kind of rotate my camera around and there's Thordin and you know, there's Thordin down there and then the eyeball is like on the left. <clears throat> so what we do is, is somebody calls out like where to look and right now it's like look CD. Um, we call out our markers. Um, so you dodge the gaze uh, right there. Everybody gets an explosion. At this point, I go into the middle. I start dancing. Um, there's meteors that get, you know, all around. Um, we usually do an L we usually LB2 uh, some of the meteors just to be safe. Um, but, you know, comes back down, pops some mitigation again. Um, and that's sort of uh, those two big mechanics during this entire phase. Um... You know, there's some tank swapping here, and some. I'm sure there's some cooldown mitigation that I have no idea what's going on. Um, but at this point, really important, you want to stop below 3%. Uh, once he collapses like that, if you push him, he'll kill you. Which is sort of like the trick of this, but I don't know. It's kind of, kind of weird, kind of funny. Um, and now we're into dragon phase. Um... And uh, what we do is we split up the party. So four party members will hit Nidhogg. Four party members will hit Um What I like to do here is you see me switch really quick. That's because I focus targeted. Um, and I focus targeted uh, Hraisvelger, um to keep track of their HP because they need to remain within, a, uh, I think it's like 2 or 3% of, like, of, a, of their HP equivalent for one of their mechanics. I come out. Um, these are tethers. You've probably seen these before in other guides, um, which is kind of funny. We, uh... <clears throat> oh my gosh. Oh, how did that happen? How do they survive? Oh, I don't know. Anyway. Um, what we do is, uh, sometimes you'll see groups uh, do like a uh, one, two, three tethers like this, um, but we opted to do a, uh, a triangle setup. Um, just because it gives everybody just a bit more space and a bit more leeway um, So you don't have to be like pixel perfect on your position um, That's how we that's how we did it um, <clears throat> and then you can you can look at these um, 
you can look at these uh, rows as well um, to like line up. And uh, I apologize to tanks because I have no idea what the hell goes on over here. Um, I'm pretty sure like two giant AOEs appear on them and you have to be in certain positions. Um, but I'm sure there's plenty of tank VODs out there where you can look and and see it. Um, but this is kind of how, how it is. Um, with the tethers, you need to have um, you need to have one fire tether and one ice tether uh, together, uh, which then they, they each cancel each other out. And it's like a cone AoE that comes from the bosses. So, um, yeah, that's one of the things. Um, yeah, so if my memory serves me correctly, it's like either the tanks have to stack together or they have to be, like, apart. Um, and the positioning is, is... And it depends on... The glowing eyes, maybe? Um, I don't know. Don't take my word for it. This is just sort of like, like I said, how my brain works. So all of that stuff goes out. After that, we have all the DPS spread out because they're going to get Immortal Val, which is basically like um, <clears throat> all that one mechanic from T2. Uh, gosh, I can't even remember. I'll figure it out later. <clears throat> anyway... After that happens, this is the part where you have to um, you have to keep the HP of Nidhogg and Harais Velger um, consistent. We also set ourselves up for parties who are on the south and uh, party groups, um, which is basically a tank, healer, and, and two DPS. Um, <clears throat> one of the interesting things here is that if uh, if there if the HP discrepancy is too much on one dragon versus the other um, if Nidhogg has more HP uh, it will be a purple tether that will attach to both of them so you need to switch and DPS down it's a nice little visual cue and if it's a uh, and if Raisvelger has more HP then it'll be a white tether that tethers to um, each one so during the cast of that mechanic you have a bit of time to DPS one or the other down. And if you look at that tether and see what color that tether is, that's the color of the dragon that you need to attack um, in order to match the HP. Um, but in this case, we didn't have a tether come out between them because it all worked itself out. Now at this point, I wanna look for it. Nidhogg like fucks off. I wanna look where he like appears on the outside of the stage. And then uh, he'll either appear like uh, close to Horace Velger or far um, in this in this case he's close um, Horace Velger's head is up it can be either up or down if it's up that means tanks need to be away if it's down then it means tanks need to be forward um, and that's sort of how you need to do uh, you look at his wings so in other words we need to be on the right side and Horace Velger's dive bomb he'll dive bomb uh, either in the back uh, or the front but his dive bomb is going to cut right through the middle. So I use our markers as like, you know, if you stand right back behind here, um, you won't get hit with, with his dive bomb. Same if he's dive bombing through here um, and you stand up in front, like on the hit ring, you, you won't get hit. Um, that's sort of just the, uh, the, sort of the double idea. So you can see us both like, they're getting a few more hits in, Pally runs back, you know, past that. Um, goes through the tanks are back here the tank the two tanks have to spread out they can't hit each other um you can just see how massive this aoe around them is uh and also to uh Horace velgar's wing either on the left or right side will also go directly through the middle and you can also see this like little middle uh area guy like thing on the ground um that's also a good stage indicator um of of where the middle of the stage is um, and, and, you know, same thing here. We have our, <clears throat> we have, we have our markers placed directly through the middle. So it's, it's very easy to, uh, easy to spot. Um, right after that, we have the DPS. Uh, of course, I wish my camera was around there. Um, but you can see, uh, you can see Tiger and Venom right here. So what we do is you have to swap this Immortal Val, um, to somebody else. Uh, we switch it to the main tank, um, and uh, that just has to be a swap, and we swap it either 1 or A, depending on 
uh, the w de 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 depending on the AOE configuration of the dragons, like the dive bomb and the wings, and whether the tanks need to be far away or close, uh, that type of thing. Um, gosh, I, I'm trying to figure out what the T2 mechanic is. Um, ah, that uh, eludes, eludes my mind. It's not prey. Prey is the thing that like wrecks you like after it gets cast on you. Golly, it's uh, it's on the tip of my tongue. It's been it's been seven years. It, it'll be it'll be something. Um, no, it's been nine years since I've done that fight. Gee whiz. Um, yeah, here we go. Still playing this game, huh? Um, you can see that they passed it together. Now you're totally fine. Um, Broth flames, hardest mechanic of this phase. After you beat the after you get Broth frames squared away, um, everything's become everything becomes a little bit easier. First thing I do. Um, let me back up. Let me just talk you through like my thoughts and the pro and the process, not necessarily the mechanics, because I feel like everybody else has explained this a lot better than I have. Um, but here's how I think about it in my brain, right? All right. Pass is complete. Look at Nighog. Roth flames are coming out. Scan the arena for Race Velgar. There he is. Um, He's he's coming onto the back, so therefore we know we need to go to the towards, uh, towards Nidhog. That's what we need to do. Great. Look for the second flame. Look for the second thing, and you can the the second fireballs. And you can see me swipe my camera, uh, around there like real quick. Look at Nidhog. Look at Horace Velgar. The balls appear in the middle. Um, swing my camera around. There are the second balls going up to the front. This is um, three to one, so we get on as, and, then, and at this point we pop all of our mitigations. As we're running down, you'll as we're running to get in position, I'm looking at my debuff right here, and uh, there's a couple of different ways to do this. Um, usually with the uh, with the black debuff, you you like we originally set it up to where if you had the black debuff, you run towards uh, like like let's say that mm, how should I how should I even explain it. Well, the way that we do it is that if you have the dark ones, you run towards Nidhogg after Hroth frames. If you have the white ones, you run that way uh, towards Race Velgar. That's how we do it. Um, some some teams are always like, you know, blacks are always to the right. Um, whites are always to the left or vice versa. Uh, depending on how you want to do it, uh, you can do it anyway. Um, the two people without uh, these little dragon, uh, these little dragon things, they have to stack with their um, white dragon partner, um, <clears throat> and I'm not sure. I'll, I got a black one right here, so um, and it's also random. Anybody can get anything. It's ultimate. Um, there's no rhyme or reason for it. But anyway, um, as these Roth frames are going out, uh, AOE's will hit the entire party. So there's one, there's two, and at this point, I'm looking for. <clears throat> so at this point. I'm running towards the thing. I'm looking at my debuff. Everybody pop sprint. Pit up, put up all your shields. Um, one, and then at this point, I'm looking for uh, I'm looking for the AOE indicator of these flames, right? And then here's our here's our AOE. So that gets placed down, and you just want to run right outside this AOE right here, um, just so yeah, that that's that's just how I do it. And then you want to curve inwards like this way. And I always have my I always have my camera top down so I could just like place my character in a proper in, you know in the in the right place. Um, that's how I that's how I do it. Um, anyway, two that goes off three, um, <clears throat> and then number four, and then at this point uh, at this point you either look at hot tail or hot wing. If it's hot tail, that means you keep you know if it's hot tail, that means you keep going towards the outside of the stage. If it's hot wing. That means you have a pretty thin uh, thing to work with. It's like a box like this, um, but it'll take it'll take a, a while to get. But you can see I was waiting for that AOE, and then it's hot tail. I'm running out, and I do a little dash to be on the very outside. Um, so you can see those four AOEs, and. Um, I'll, I'll probably go back and splice in, um, you know, getting the other mechanics throughout the entire thing, but 
you know, for this one, just sort of going through and explaining it. Um, after you complete all that, you have to go back and uh, the two tanks have to go back into the center and switch out and switch the mortal valve. And now this one right here, as we get back into our groups, we make sure that both of them are, the HP is even. <clears throat> um, and there we go. Now at this point we get set up for, uh, oh yeah. So there's gonna be a hot wing or hot tail. And then and then um, Horace Velger is gonna have his head down or his head, or his head up. And so, and also his wing. So for instance, um, we're gonna be in the, we're gonna be in the middle. Um, so the party just goes all the way back. The tanks have to, um, the tanks, you can see how far away they're from, like one's in the middle and one's up close, but we just have to be, um, and you can see how, how thin this is, right? Um, so you have to, you have to just be like in this really thin, uh, in this really thin line. Um, and for the last mechanic, this is how thin the line is um as well actually i think it, no i think it might be a little thicker it might be that because horace velger doesn't have his wings um so anyway um if the if the head was down uh yeah if the head was down like it was here the tanks are up front if the head was up the tanks are going to be away and then the party's going to be close to um horace velger um so pretty pretty simple pretty straightforward um and then we have um our, our uh, caster range dps Go and switch the mortal val in the center. You can see right here, if my camera's on it. Boom, mortal val gets switched. And then everybody gets set up for a second set of tethers. Now there's going to be, um, now there's going to be three tethers, three red tethers, three ice tethers, three, three ice tethers, three fire tethers. Um, one of our healers is gonna go uh, far away. And then um, the other, uh, the other folks, you can see, you can see our setup position right here, um, like fire, 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 ice and ice, and this guy is an ice right here. <coughs> ah, excuse me. And then we have, um, and then we have our tanks in the middle. I don't know if they need to be out or not. Man, if you're a tank, you're probably looking at other guides and not this one. Like, let's be honest. Um, <laughs> uh, but this is this is kind of our setup. Everybody gets everybody gets a debuff on them, um, and at this point we line up because both of them will jump away. Um, if you have fire, you get cleansed with ice. I just call it ice. I don't know exactly what it is. But if you if you have ice, you go over to Ninhog who will cast fire. Um, here's one of the really 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 important things forever and, and ever is that these fires will kill you. But the thing is you can also hit these bosses at the same time. So just just do not Just if you have fire like I did I, I literally run to the spot Sheath my weapon. I let go of the keyboard at this point. I just let go don't touch anything And then and then as soon as they dive bomb through everybody cleanses their fire or their ice mortal Val gets passed one last time You know to the person that's standing at the back as soon as they run down, as soon as they touch down, um, pop all of your uh, pop all of your two minutes again. Go ham on them. Only two people in the back. This is me and Ziza. We switch the mortal Val. That's it. You're done with mortal Val. <clears throat> and now you just um, you just take them all down. Um, and yeah, with with two minutes up, they they die really quickly here. Um, and yeah, that's how that's how it go. That's how we go through this phase. Um, and now we're, uh, we're at the last phase. We're at the last transition. Um, so one of the things you got to look out for is there's this first bleed. Um, so don't pop all of your mitigation here. Um, <clears throat> wait, um, you'll see, I'll start dancing at about right here. At least I think I do. Did I forget? No, I, yeah, well, I kind of forgot. Anyway, this second bleed right here, you want to wait until about two seconds and now pop every single mitigation you have in order to shield every single everything um, for this guy. And you'll survive. Um, one of the things that we do here is that the party moves away, the tanks stay at one, and uh, for the tanks, um, you always want to have the 
uh, orientation of the boss on the red markers or north and south because of the uh, because of the whatchamacallit it flares um, not giga flares um, exa flares that's what they are yeah um, and then what you want to do is you, you know this is the last phase uh, it is not nece it, it's a healing and a tanking difficulty like as a ranged DPS I'm just like woo fire my fire my chakram guns at it um, <clears throat> anyway exa flares come out uh, you'll see his swords can either be an ice or flame swords if it's ice um, if it's ice you want to be well, actually what is it hold on a second I think it's you want to be in yeah okay so a couple of things during this phase right um, everything looks scary but it's really not uh, as long as you know where to move and and where to, how to position yourself ice uh, the way the way venom our raid leader said it it's like if he's ice we want to give him a hug and warm him up so we want to go into him if it's fire he's too hot we want to get away um, so the ice swords um, you always want to be in and fire swords you always want to be out now the his hitbox um his aoe hitbox is the same as um nidhogg uh, back in phase two where it's basically you can stand right inside of his hitbox like this you know you can see where we are right here um and you will not get hit with the aoe's and that and his fire and ice swords are always um are always like that um <clears throat> so the first thing is is that you either stay you either stay in or out and then what I'm look and then the next thing I'm looking for is I'm looking for this little white dot right here, um, with this little like laser beam, um, and we're going uh, to to the back to the back to behind him, um, align aligned with these markers. And then there's this little dot right here which you've probably also um, seen before, but it's also going to be about movement timing, right? So if we kick play, um, as soon like you can see my camera line up as soon as that disappears go in there stand go back and then stand um, at this little spot once the next thing gets hit you can run in and then go back and then you can see our tanks go to the left and right position here um, so here let's back that up and I'll show you how like kind of my mind works right so here's what I'm looking for looking for our swords okay it's in we go stand in next thing next thing to do is look at this little dot right here Look at that little dot. Align myself. Boom. Go in. <clears throat> next, next exa flare is hit. Okay, great. Now I'm looking at. Now I'm looking at this little dot right here. Next exa flare is hit. I go there. Third exa flare is hit. After they disappear, um, melees and tanks can go in. To, can go into the hit ring to the boss and stay. Stay within the hit ring right here until the fourth set of exo flares hit exo flare hit, hits again and then and then the tanks can go this way and go that way um you'll see it you'll do it a couple times it'll work it'll make sense you know no big deal now uh the next thing is that melees uh there's a thing i don't i have no idea how any of these mechanics work but i just know that um <clears throat> I just know that at some point, one person needs to be standing underneath the boss in order to take a hit of some kind. And you can see Pally is taking like the first hit and the two tanks are taking the hits, right? Um, now, the second melee, Tiger goes in underneath the boss and all three of them get hit. And now here's uh, Ockmorns. So one of the things we gotta look for is that uh, he'll place down three circles right here um, and what we do is like we have the two tanks stand at south um, and then uh, healer groups right so um, you know two DPS and a healer right um, and then you also got to look at his swords because his swords are on on fire so that means we got to get away from him because he's too hot and so uh, you'll notice that these little circles right here are both inside and outside of his hit ring so what we need to do with the flames is that we need to be on the outside and then step in. And the reason why we step in is because all of the healing mitigation um, will reach everybody if we step in. But if we're on the outside, um, 
healing mitigation, healings and mitigation might not reach everybody. So, you know, take a step out, make sure you're in the ring, then take a step in. And then, uh, yeah, this stuff hurts. I have no idea what the healers do. They just they just keep spamming their stuff. Um, at this moment, uh, the tanks will will reorient the boss, um, and then the the first range DPS goes under the boss, and the second range DPS goes under the boss. There he is um, to get hit. <clears throat> now it's Giga Flare uh, Fire Sword, so we have to be out of his hitbox. We have to be away from him, and then. Um, and then this one is actually, uh, we rotated around, um, oh, actually, no, we didn't. We, uh, we just ran straight through, and then we, uh, we slid over to the, the other side. Um, <clears throat> essentially, that's what you do to avoid it, right? Uh, three giga, three giga flares will appear, and, and, you know, you run away from the first one, uh, run away from the second one, run away from the third one. Reorient the boss on, on the A marker, which is what the tanks will do. Um, the healers now go into the middle and get and get their hits, right? And I have no idea what these debuffs are down here, but that's what we do. That's that's how it that's how it figures it out. Um, again, look at his swords, look at the exaflares going behind, go to that one little spot, and then go to that, that little X. After that one goes off, melees can go in, and then you can move to your spots and that's the entire phase of the mechanic. And then everything just repeats from now on. So we do Ockmorns and, um, you know, uh, your party and everybody, you'll plan your cooldowns. And you can see, like, in this case, uh, it's ice. So we want to stand on the inside, you know, because <clears throat> you can see you can see the ice AOE going around, uh, going around here. Um, but, of course, it's an ultimate, so everything hurts like hell. You know, you want to try to give, you know, uh, you want to try to give the healers every bit of help and mitigation um, that you can. <clears throat> so Ziza goes in for the middle, he takes a hit. I go into the middle, I take the next hit, and then uh, the Giga Flare comes out again. So there's a Giga Flare, go to the opposite side, but this time we need to stay inside because it's um, it's an ice, and you know, mitigations. You can pop sprint. Um, go and we go away from that one and then uh, we kind of shift and rotate <clears throat> we also stay in the we also stay in the shroud tanks will go you know take it at one and it's and it's rinse and repeat the healers go inside things happen again and you know like I I don't understand all the intricacies of any of these mechanics and but for this one see how we're like See how for fire flames we're just barely outside of his hitbox, and here's the dot I'm looking at. So we go to the dot, and then we go to this X right here, boink, and then melees come back in, and then tanks go here, and then go here. <coughs> Easy. Yeah, but I, I mean, I like I said, I've done this fight like seven times, and probably had have like 1,500 pulls by now um, at various stages, and. Man, my heart goes like it keeps getting exciting, like you know, every every single time um, we get really close to clearing this. Uh, it's it's such an epic fight, and I love every minute of it. Um, <clears throat> yeah, and I, I pop a little bit just to help everybody out, and, you know. Um, same thing here. Um, range DPS goes in. I go in. And now he'll put down his final um, Mornifaz edge um, with these little like spiky things. So pretty much um, the way that we have it, like if your DPS is on point, you're you're, you're totally fine. It's actually a very easy DPS check um, compared to other ultimates, but uh, mechanic-wise, it's like you know you got to do the mechanics right. So <clears throat> so the thing is, is that um, you know we have the two tanks and one healer stand in one. And then we, and then we'll have the, the other healer and a range DPS, and the other lower range DPS like stand in the next set. If you do get to a next set, and then, um, and then the two DPS that are left outside, uh, just keep hitting him until until he's dead or until you have to start over again. And that's the um, that's the fight.
But pretty much, like, I know that we didn't go over all the mechanics or all the details, but, like, it's my hope that, um, you know, and, and this thing is, it's probably going to be, like, a two-hour long video, but, uh, maybe you can, like, listen to it as you're, like, doing some other stuff and just sort of, you know, understanding a little bit more of, like, you know, what the movement is and how it all works and, and just, um, and, you know, it, it, look, it's like a supplemental guide, right? And, um... One of the things, you know, one of the things, if you made it this far, thank you for watching. Um, but one of the things is, is that uh, I keep saying that real life work uh, takes place. And uh, I just, you know, the the previous easy peasy guides that I, w I was doing, those, while they're great and they showed off every single little bit of intricacy of, of the fight and like there's, you know, there's graphics and there's... Um, you know, there's graphics, like I wrote a script and like I read that and like if it was wrong, I had to read it again. But some of those guides and like in getting everything exactly right takes like it took nearly 40 hours to do like P4S, you know, just just in that. And that's that's off of that's off of work. And to add to a fact, like, you know, I don't tell this often. And if and I don't think you're going to watch the watch the video to this far. But um, I actually work for. Um, I work for Sony uh, Sony Pictures Television, which is an interesting thing, and um, as one of their head editors. And so, if you think about it in, in my perspective, uh, first, I love Final Fantasy. I think it's a uh, a good game. I like making videos. I like helping people out. Um, but when you're working like eight hours to ten hours a day on editing like footage, on editing like really cool projects. The last thing you want to do is come back and like edit, you know, more stuff on a game that you want to have like fun time with. Um, so that being said, uh, like career, like that's why I haven't really gotten into the whole YouTube uh, thing, and I haven't been doing it like full time because I, I th this other opportunity working with Sony and on a on a on probably one of the highest like professional levels. With working on like some really cool stuff um kind of takes precedent and uh but at that at the same time i still want to like you know spend a good amount of time like just sort of walking through these you know walking through these not necessarily calling it a guide but more of just like calling it uh just doing something that's going to help you guys out that's going to help you guys like you know get these clears and, and maybe, like, you know, just listening to this in the background. Or maybe you're watching it through the whole time. Hey, thanks. Um, I really want... Uh, I really want a lot of people to uh, enjoy this game. And, you know, have a, have a good time. And hopefully, you know, if you're progressing, maybe, maybe some of these, like, little things will be, like, an aha moment. And you'll be like, oh my gosh, like, this mechanic is so much more easier than it was... Uh, than it was just a few days ago because, like, I'm looking at different things... And, uh, and seeing different things um, or, or seeing a different perspective of the fight that you might not have seen before. Um, and that's the whole point. Um, but enough of me blabbing around, uh, uh, enough of me blabbling a, a, around or, or however the saying goes. Um, I hope you enjoyed this. I hope you learned something. Um, and uh, hey, to more Final Fantasy uh, crazy shenanigans in the future. And like 6.2 is like coming right out, uh, you know, around the corner. So. You know, that'll be a lot of fun. We're going to get a second rate tier. Um, yeah. So until next time, keep on adventuring. <laughs>